DeepSeek Coder is a new model that has been released by researchers in Beijing. It's outperforming Code Llama on a number of benchmarks. Perhaps more importantly, though, it's a very permissively licensed model, which means it can be used in an open source and commercial way without having any limitations, including limitations like Facebook's Llama, which does not allow you to train other models with it. For Agenda, I'll give you an overview of the model. It comes in 1 billion, 7 billion, and 33 billion sizes. I'll talk through the prompt, the prompt format, which is a little different than the Llama model. Then we'll go through inference using RunPod, which is inference on a GPU. I'll show you chat UI briefly, a chat interface. Then I'll get into comparisons with Code Llama and particularly want to look at long context inference. Then to finish, I'll talk you through function calling and some of the models that Trellis has fine-tuned if you want to use the DeepSeq model for function calling. And last off, I'll just review on resources. DeepSeq as a model comes in three different sizes, 33 billion, which is very similar in size to the Code Llama 34B. DeepSeq also comes in the 7 billion size. It's actually 6.7 billion and in a 1.3 billion parameter model. That's a really small model. It's smaller than the base Llama model of 7 billion. It's actually a bit similar in size to Tiny Llama. You can check out the earlier video on Tiny Llama. I think the very small model is interesting if you want to run on edge devices or if you need very quick inference. So it's pretty cool they've made a model that small. As I mentioned in the introduction, DeepSeq is very permissively licensed. There aren't many restrictions on commercial use. There's no restriction on training other models using the DeepSeq coder model. So this is an improvement over the Llama open source license. And I think even if it performed just the same as the meta model for this licensing reason, it probably has an advantage. Before I get started with the inference, just a quick note on the prompt format for this model. Those of you familiar with Llama will know that you often put a system message wrapped in sys, and then you wrap that along with the user input with inst and end inst. So this is how you might format your prompt, preparing an input for a Llama model or Llama 2, of course. Now it's a bit different here for Deep Sea Coder. They allow you to use tokenizer.applyChat template, and this applies the chat template to an array of messages, user or system or user system and assistant messages. When this is applied, it automatically injects this system prompt in addition, in addition to whatever system prompt you add. It says that you're an AI programming assistant. You'll only answer questions related to computer science. And it says not to answer politically sensitive questions, security and privacy questions, or non-computer science questions. And then it uses this uh, triple pound instruction before the question and then triple pound and then response or triple hash before response, before the assistance response would be generated by the machine. Of course, you can customize this yourself. If you don't want to use the apply chat template, you could simply formulate the prompt just as we do for the Llama style. And indeed, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the tutorial. If you want to serve the deep seek coder model, one easy way to do so on a GPU is using RunPod. I'll provide this link here in the description of this video. If you follow up on the link, it's going to take you to a template, DeepSeq Coder 33B API by Trellis Research. And you can run this model quite easily. I recommend an A6000, which has very high availability. You can directly make API calls to this by clicking on the readme. You can check out a little more just by adding in your pod ID here to the URL. Um, that is a URL then that you can make queries to, and you can ask questions like, what is deep learning? So this is a very quick way to get an API started that allows you to make API requests in parallel as well. If you're interested in doing inference on chat UI uh, using their chat interface, you can use the code provided in the Llama server setup repo to set up inference. Um, here is the model setup. And when you go into chat UI, here you can see I'm running the DeepSeq Coder 33B instruct AWQ. So it's activation aware quantization type uh, quantization from the bloke. And we can just have a short chat here, say hello, and then write some short code to add two numbers. 
You can also check out the blokes repositories on Hugging Face, where you can also find inference instructions as well for different models, AWQ, GPTQ, or GGUF, which is the format if you want to run inference on your laptop. Next up, I want to show you some comparisons between DeepSea Coder and Llama, uh, Code Llama, in fact. What I'm going to do is load both of the models. So for model name A, I've got the DeepSeq AI model, which is 33 billion parameters. And I have for model B, Code Llama, which is 34 billion parameters. So two models that are very similar in size and probably are really similar in architecture as well. There are some small differences with the grouping of attention, which has effects upon speed. But primarily, it's the data sets and supposedly the improved quality of the data set in DeepSeq Coder that allows it to outperform Code Llama in a number of benchmarks. Of course, we're going to see for ourselves in these benchmarks that I'll test today. After doing some installation, um, we will load each of these models, Model A and Model B. I'm going to load them quantized using bits and bytes and F4. That's probably the most accurate form of quantization available right now, although it's not the fastest compared to AWQ. We're not too concerned with speed, so that's why I'm going to go with this option today. It also allows me to do quantization on the fly, which is a nice attribute if you're trying to speed up development. So when these two models are loaded, we'll move on to set up the tokenizers. When I do any testing, I like to use a really simple example. So I'm going to start off just by asking each model to list the planets in our solar system. And I'm just going to allow them to generate text without having any stop token. So here you can see the DeepSeq model. It indeed lists the um, eight planets. Is it eight? Yep, eight planets in our solar system. And it keeps on talking afterwards because I've got no stop token set up. And in the Code Lama case, it also lists out the eight planets. Um, so that's my little check. Everything seems to be working fine. And we're going to move on to the first test, which is to return a sequence in reverse. The idea of this text, uh, this test is simply you provide some letters like ABC or 12X, and you ask the model to return those letters in reverse. It's quite a difficult task. And as we'll see here, the DeepSeq model is able to return the first sequence in reverse. So it returns AB in reverse as BA. AVB, it returns as VBA. ABVZP, it returns correctly as well. ABVZPS, uh, it does not manage to return that correctly. So it's able to get as far as this token here, which is or this sequence here, which is six. So it's able to basically get five in a row correct. But um, now we can look at Code Llama, and you can see that Code Llama actually struggles in this case with even doing. Um, even doing the sequence of AB, it has trouble. So there probably is some strength improvement here, it seems, just with this simple uh, token reversal test when we compare both of those models. What you can see is that this challenge is just very difficult. Um, you can try and do it with another AI. Let's say, for example, let's try ChatGPT. Here we are in ChatGPT. And let's just see. So IGA, that works fine. And this one here, 4089. So it works fine. I think as you get longer and longer, the model will slowly have difficulty. So 89FAS, D98F, SAF. 0 UN 32089 IGA. So this looks good as well. And for this sequence here. Okay, so when you get to a longer sequence length, you can see that there are some errors. For example, with SAF here, that in reverse should be FAS. But you can see that within the reverse sequence, according to GPT-4, it's actually still forwards instead of backwards. So this is indeed quite a difficult test, but GPT-4 does way, way better than what uh, GPT, um, than what the code models do. Now we can quickly look at GPT-3.5. 
and let's just do something like this. 70498Y. Let's edit that. And this still looks correct. 7DN4, DAF, 098Y. And here for GPT 3.5, you can see there is an error, so DALFF. And here, when it's reversed, it leaves out an F. And so you can see GPT 3.5 is weaker than uh, GPT 4 on this metric, although it also does appear to be somewhat stronger than the Code Llama or indeed the um, DeepSeq coder model. The next test we'll be doing is passkey retrieval, which is where I embed a random passkey in the middle of the text, right in the middle of the text. It's in the middle of a Berkshire Hathaway transcript and then see whether the model is able to retrieve it. More specifically, I'll ask the model to respond um, only with the passkey contained within the text. So re respond only with the passkey contained within the below text. Then I give them the text and then I say respond only with the passkey contained within the above text. And then the assistant should respond the passkey is and continue that phrase. Before I do an actual passkey retrieval, I've earlier run a check where I give a long piece of text and then ask for a summary. And I've done that with both models. So we have a really long transcript of the Berkshire Hathaway 2023 meeting. It's about, how long is it about? Something like 30,000 tokens in length. Let's see here. Um, it's 29,000 tokens in length, so almost 30,000 tokens. And at the very end, I ask for a summary to be given. So let's go down. Wow, this is quite a long piece. Uh, here we go. So here's the summary from the assistant with the deep sea coder model. The text discusses the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting, including Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Ajit Jain. They discuss the company's earnings, the impact of AI and robotics on the stock market. Yeah, so this is actually in line with the content of the passage. Let's take a look at Code Llama. So for Code Llama, um, yeah. We don't quite have a meaningful response here. One thing that's interesting is both of these models are stated to work for 16,000 tokens, although it's known Code Lama can work for a bit longer. I have run these models clearly on 30,000 tokens, and they seem to give sensible, although in the case of Code Lama, not useful responses here. This is pretty interesting because I haven't used rope scaling. It's commonly uh, Commonly, rope scaling is used when the model is loaded. I'll just show you that right up here. So right back at the start, when we loaded both of the models, there is an option to include rope scaling with a factor of two, which in principle should allow you to get performance at twice the length, the trained length by interpolating the positional encodings. But I haven't even used that, and I'm still running on a context length that's far longer than the number of tokens. You can see I'm actually getting a warning when I do run that. So it says the token index's sequence length is longer than the specified maximum, because it's 29,000 instead of 16. And yet, I'm getting a pretty sensible response. So this is pretty interesting. And in fact, I was able to run this then for the passkey retrieval. And we're going to run that live right now. So we can see the performance of both of the models retrieving a passkey. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you a run from earlier where I did 50,000 tokens and I did it only using the DeepSeq model. So I ran it uh, for a context length, which we should see here, of 43,000 tokens. And here you have the really long transcript snippet. And right down at the bottom, uh, you can see here that DeepSeq is actually able to get the passkey. So the passkey retrieval is pretty phenomenal uh, for these models. It's so good, I even looked at it in Claude. So what I did here is I copied all of this text, just literally like this here, leaving out the passkey, of course. And I copied it into Claude and I clicked enter. And Claude says, I do not see a passkey explicitly stated in the text provided. The text appears to be a transcript of a discussion between various people without any passkey included. So this is pretty interesting. Um, it seems that for passkey retrieval, 
we're getting better performance on the open source models than the Claude chat model here. Of course, I can't test chat GPT at that kind of length because, well, I don't have access to the 32K model and I'm actually testing even longer than 32K. I'm at 43K input tokens. Uh, so there's no model from OpenAI right now that offers that long of a context. I'm not sure exactly why Claude doesn't get this. It's possible that there are different tricks being used for the attention, and that's for resulting in a loss um, of information in the middle of the text, or it's possible they haven't got the same amount of training on long context data as the open source models. In the meantime, we've been waiting to run our tests, uh, directly comparing DeepSeq and CodeLama. So let's just scroll down. This test, just as a reminder, is only on 29,000 tokens, so nearly 32,000. I'm just doing it a bit smaller so I can fit both on the same GPU. So let's scroll down and we should see here pass key coming up. Wow, this is pretty long. Okay, here we go. So yeah, clearly the pass key is correctly received in the code llama model. And we have to scroll up to try and find where the deep seek model is. So here in the DeepSeq model, the pass key is also found. So basically we get very strong performance in both of the coding models um, with doing these pass key retrieval tasks. Now, the very last comparison I want to do here is on a website development task. Here, we're going to ask the model to create a website, um, not only uh, create a website, but create an SH script to create a website. Um, so when I run the SH script, it should create the folder structure and the files needed. And the website should allow a user to find the first prime, first n prime Fibonacci numbers by entering a number n on the website. The script should set up everything necessary and create all necessary code and logic. And lastly, should give me the command to run the website on localhost. So I'm basically asking the model to, in one shot, create uh, a script that allows me to deploy a website to my local host. Now, I'm going to need uh, more tokens here because the script is going to be longer than just 50 tokens. So I'm going to go right back up earlier in my script and I'm going to adjust the inference code. So the inference code here is set to 50 tokens. I'm going to allow it to generate 1,000 tokens. And then going back down to the bottom of my script here, let's set off the coder to create our website. All right, we have a response now from DeepSeek. So we have our simple bash script that creates a website. Uh, you can see it creates project directory, structure, files. Um, it provides some code, some pug code here, and looks like a basic website layout. Now, it does say that uh, there isn't any code included for actually finding the first n prime Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so that is definitely not what we asked for because we asked it to specifically include everything and create all necessary code and logic. And nonetheless, let's just quickly test this code here. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this SH script. Now you should be careful running SH scripts, by the way. Make sure that you read them first so that you don't run up against any issues. So here I'm in a folder and I'm going to create, I'll call it uh, deep seek sh and chmod plus x deep seek dot sh just to give it permission to run nano deep seek dot sh. And I'll paste in the code here and control X, Y, and enter. And now I can just run this by doing deep seek .sh. So let's see what this brings. Okay, looks like it's created the website. So let's move to um, where it's created the code. And it's called Prime Fibonacci Website. 
So we'll just move into that. And I did npm start. And we can now run, presumably, here on our local host 3000. Okay, so, I mean, it's giving a reasonable website. But it's not able to post to Prime Fibonacci, which makes sense, because um, it has not provided those scripts. So it's good at making uh, the initial website, but it's not providing the full scripts, unfortunately. Now, if you did prompt it further for the scripts, it might give you that. But I'm testing the one-shot performance right here. Now, let's take a look at Code Llama. So here's... Um, it's not sure how to create the file structure. Interesting. All right, so you can see here Code Llama is not able to stay on track with the problem quite as well. Um, it's kind of refusing to produce an SH script. Uh, so I would say in this case that probably the DeepSeq model is a bit stronger. It did a good job, and I feel like if I had a further discussion with it, it probably would be able to give me the code for doing the Fibonacci problem, since we already know from the earlier coding problem that it can do that. And so I hope that gives you a sense. I would say maybe um, let's just for comparison compare it to... Uh, to chat GPT. So let's clear the chat. And let's uh, compare it to GPT 3.5. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, it does create index.sh. So let's see here. Okay, this is good. Okay, this is good. So let's, let's follow the instructions. It's not exactly one script, but it's, it's something I can actionably do. So let's run this. And copy this code here. Now again, just make sure that you skim through the code that you're not executing anything malicious. Oops. That was a mistake. So here I need to create index.sh. Plus x index.sh nano. Is that correct? Yeah, create index.sh. Run index.sh. Makes sense. That's what I was doing. And start.sh. It says it's running on localhost. So let's see here. Okay. Let's try 10. All right, that did not work. Interesting. Okay, if you iterate with ChatGPT, you would eventually, and I'm sure also with the code or the deep seek code or code llama, you would be able to get a functioning website. But this is a one shot test. And as you can see, the website does display, but it doesn't actually do anything. So I would say, all in all, the performance, if you measure it very strictly, is Maybe somewhat similar ChatGPT to the Deep Sea Coder. With the Code Llama version, it's not able to provide as easily a fully ready website. Very briefly, before we touch on overall resources, I want to show you function calling. There are a set of function calling models available now for the Deep Sea Coder model. I've made available a 33B model for purchase, the 7B or 6.7B model, and also the 1.3 billion model available on Hugging Face. Just to give you a sample of how those perform, they allow you to input function metadata, 
Here I have two functions, delete file and also get current weather. And when they are provided to this fine-tuned model as metadata, if somebody asks how hot is it in Berlin, I'm wondering if I go out for a cycle, the response uh, will be a formatted JSON object that calls the function, gives the location and the unit that's relevant to that location in this case. And so this can be very helpful if you want to connect a DeepSeq model to APIs. Of course, the LAMA models are also available in fine-tuned function format, as is the Mistral 7B as well. We've jumped around a lot in this video on DeepSeq Coder, just to give you a brief summary and then try to lay out the resources that might be helpful if you want to use this model. In brief, I would say this model seems to be performing at least as well as Code Llama. It probably is performing a bit better. We could see that in how it generates a full website. It was a little bit more complete and following the instruction than Code Llama. It also seems maybe to be a little better on longer contexts in providing summaries. In terms of resources, if you want to mess around with this model, and I would say this for most models that are available open source, head over to Hugging Face and check out the bloke's repositories. There are guides there on doing inference that you can follow. You can follow a guide for GGUF if you want to run it on your laptop. I recommend having a MacBook for that. It's going to be slow on a computer. But if you do want to run on a computer, probably best to use the 1.3 billion model, which is the smallest and quickest. If you want to run in a Google Collab notebook, which is quite a handy way to go, you might want to use AWQ. That's the Activation Aware Quantization Method. It provides the fastest model for inference. It reduces the model size as well. So you should be able to run the 6.7B model very easily on a free Collab notebook. If you want to move to higher levels and run inference on a server, maybe it's a server you're using to generate prompts or to process data for training language models, one of the easiest ways to get started is the one-click run pod template, which I will link below. If you want to get more into the formatting, you can check out and purchase the inference repository, which I'll link as well below. Last off, I haven't talked much about fine tuning in this video, but it's possible to fine tune the DeepSeq models in the same way as the Lama models. And so they will be compatible with all of the scripts provided in the fine tuning repository available for purchase as well below. Let me know your questions on the DeepSeq model. Looking forward to the next video. Cheers.